Hi, welcome to Dread Central. How's it going? Hey, Dread Hello. Central. Yeah. Hi, Dread Central. Um, just to start us off, happy Pride Month. I'm wondering yeah. if you're at a Pride party and someone passes you the auxiliary, what musician are you going to put on first? Emma, can I start with you? <laughs> you know, <laughs> nothing um, makes me more nervous than if someone passes me the auxiliary cord. <laughs> Um, I mean, I would have to go, I'd have to go Madonna or I'd have to throw on some Carly Rae Jepsen, you know, I feel like just anything to like get me dancing. Cause you know, I want to dance. It's gotta be Carly. Uh, and Love her. <laughs> me too. John, okay, do, you, do you have anyone that you'd go straight to? Uh, maybe like, maybe the sound, maybe the Hedwig soundtrack, the, the cast yes. recording yes. Of, uh, of Hedwig with John Cameron Mitchell. That would awesome. be, or maybe yes. Dolly Parton. If I oh, wanted to keep it more. Yes, giving good answer, John. Okay. <laughs> um, Emma, if someone hasn't seen the abandoned trailer, how would you describe it to them? Um, I would say it's really funny, really light. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> um, abandoned. Well, how about I showed the trailer to my mom and she was scared and she actually was with me when I was filming it and she was horrified. Um, but no, I mean, this is, it's, it's a psychological thriller. It's, you know, kind of, uh, the age old story about a couple that moves to a farmhouse and things start happening, but it's completely turned on its head and you cannot guess what's coming. It feels very like, you know, a modern fresh twist on the haunted house story. And I mean, I just couldn't stop thinking about it when I read the script. And when I saw the final product of the movie, I was, I was just so excited by it because we all loved it and worked really hard and became such like a tight unit while we were filming in North Carolina on this movie. And, yeah. uh, and I think people are going to be really pleasantly surprised. Like they think they know what they're getting into, but they don't. Awesome. Um, I was wondering, has it was either of you extra traumatized by a horror movie growing up? John, and I'm wondering, do you have- Oh, absolutely. I was talking about this earlier, but I saw, when I was about 14, I think I saw The Exorcist for the first time. And I remember quite vividly, I didn't sleep for 24 hours. I watched it in the afternoon in broad daylight, like after a sleepover on Halloween. And then I went home that night and this is like eight, nine hours later, um, still could not shake it and get it out of my head, ended up lying awake. And I remember the sun coming up and birds chirping. And then I just got up and I think went to school, but, but I did not sleep for a full, like I lost a full night of sleep over the film. Yeah. It freaked me out so bad. That's a good one. Um, I might shift questions for you, Emma. Uh, everyone knows you really killed it in Scream 4, but if you got to be in another horror franchise, which one would you pick? Oh my goodness. Well... What are my options? Can I have multiple choice? Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's Halloween, there's Freddy, there's there's Pinhead, you know, there's the big guys. Oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> you know, I I don't know. Maybe maybe I'd go back to Scream. I I feel like I feel like I, I wasn't done with Scream. Uh huh. Well, uh, that's interesting. I like to hear that. Um, for both of you, do you guys believe in ghosts and the supernatural or no? To or boot, John? Sure. Or, sorry. Yeah. Sure. Okay, sweet. That's non-committal. I like it. And Emma, how are you? Of course, I believe in all of it. I mean, I was also the person that like, you know, believed in like fairies and Santa Claus and the tooth fairy until I was like way too old. <laughs> so I, I'm a believer through and through. I like that. My last question for you, Emma, um, is being a parent changed how you approach this role? I mean, I think definitely subconsciously even if not like consciously I think there were just like little things that you know came out in me in this role that wouldn't have if I wasn't a mom and I was telling John like my sister's 21 and she watched the movie with me the first time I saw it and she she loved it so much she was so like surprised by it and she she said she goes I don't I don't know if like it would have been as amazing if you weren't really a mom. Like, I just think it really added this other layer to like what you did. And so that really meant a lot to me that she said that just without like me prompting it. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, you know, this was my first time like playing a mom and being a mom. And it was, it was very, I don't know, it was a very like unique experience. And despite how scary the material was, it was really nice. And, and like my baby came with me to North Carolina, John met the baby. Um, my mom would bring him to have lunch with me every day. So it was, yeah, it was like a really, it was a really unique experience that I'm glad I got to have. Perfect. Thank you both so much. It was great meeting you today. It was really nice talking to you.